About a year ago, I used the high-speed steel end mill for the first time in almost 20 years. Now, I've always said that high-speed steel tools have absolutely no place in a modern machine shop, but in this case, I actually proved myself wrong. We were doing some repair and overhaul work on some aluminum electrical enclosures, and inside each of these boxes were components like PC boards, coax cables, screws, and other junk materials that needed to be removed and replaced. And all of these components were encased inside of an epoxy resin that was bonded to the aluminum enclosure. The removal process was taking several hours and we would break carbide end mills left and right as components within the epoxy came loose and were sucked into the cutter. We tried several different approaches, but we struggled to arrive at a viable solution. As a few of us stood around the machine and brainstormed, someone suggested trying a high-speed steel cutter as the tool would be able to deflect more without breaking. Now this sounded stupid to me as I hadn't even considered a high-speed steel tool in decades. I hadn't even seen one since I worked at my dad's shop as a teenager. But wouldn't you know it, I rewrote the program for the steel tool, and it worked. Not only did the tool last, but we were able to get the cycle time down to under 30 minutes. In the last 10 years, I've been in several small machine shops that look at consumable cutting tools as a necessary evil, and not as an avenue to increase profit. In every case, these guys preferred using high-speed steel over carbide because it was so much cheaper, and the company couldn't afford fancy carbide cutters. I had machinists at these shops tell me some wild things. For example, the vices aren't strong enough for high-speed machining feed rates, or the best way to ream a hole is to use 10 different reamers stepping up two thou at a time. The misconceptions I heard people quoting as fact were insane. At one shop, I heard an old program running in 304 stainless, and it sounded so bad I couldn't stand it. I'd only been working at this shop for three days, and I'd been told not to reprogram anything, but just to spend a week or two observing. After I heard the fourth or fifth three-quarter carbide end mill break in ten minutes, I couldn't take it anymore. I went and talked to the machinist and took a look at the process. The program was profiling a piece of two-inch thick stainless with about a 90% step over at one inch a minute at full depth. Cycle time was over an hour. Now the machinist was a young guy with limited experience and I asked him if he'd like me to fix the job as he had several of these parts to make. He said, please, this job is always a nightmare. So I reprogrammed the part and gave the machinist a new program. He loaded it up into the control and said, whoa dude, you made a typo. You almost had me running at 200 inches a minute instead of one. I said, that was no typo, that feed rate's correct. But he was so afraid that he refused to run it and told me that no machine in that facility ran over 20 inches a minute, even in aluminum. So I told him fine, I'd run it myself so he could see that it was safe. Needless to say, after finishing that part in under 5 minutes, his mind was completely blown. And that machinist actually started to enjoy running new programs. After a couple weeks of reprogramming several parts like this, the manager of manufacturing called me into his office and having no machining experience, he explained how amazed he was because he had no idea that the machines could even move that fast. There were several other funny results of speeding up this shop with modern tooling and modern tool paths, like when maintenance went and complained to my boss that the tool paths I was putting out were dangerous in removing paint from the machines. My boss laughed and told them he'd gladly take missing paint over missing ship dates. Using carbide tools and high-speed machining toolpaths is second nature to some of us, but believe it or not, in 2022, some people still don't understand why they should spend the extra money on coated carbide and good cam software. Carbide's easy. A half-inch high-speed steel cutter may cost half of what a carbide tool costs, but you can literally run that carbide tool in some steels at over 30 times faster than the high-speed steel cutter, assuming a coated tool and a constant engagement toolpath. You can go from 75 surface feet up to 750 and beyond. Carbide tools will last longer in almost all cases as well. When you start venturing into true high-speed machining, that conversational programming on your machine usually just isn't going to do what you need it to, and CAM becomes incredibly important. Modern constant engagement tool paths, as well as support for barrel mills and circle segment cutters will run circles around the tool paths that most shops were using 20 years ago. The point is that I know a lot of shops that try to make their money by paying people less and keeping a shoebox full of old tools and refusing to upgrade their CAM software, but that just isn't the way to go. If you invest in your people, tools, and software, you are going to make money. Watch some of our videos and you'll see what's possible. Join our Facebook machinist group and you'll get real answers from real machinists. Join our online academy and see what your CAM software may be missing. Visit our online store and you can buy the exact same tools we use in our videos at the cheapest price you'll find them anywhere. 
Here at Titans, our goal is to open your mind so that you can compete in the worldwide industry and your shop can make real money. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.